In this part of the unit, we're going to look at another way we can go and control how regular expressions are working for us. And we're going to look at what are called the regular expression flags. So when we use the uh, compile function from the RE module um, to go and compile a regular expression, it takes actually an optional keyword parameter, flags, that can be used to adjust exactly how those regular expressions are being compiled and how they're going to go and work. So to go and give you an example of the some of the more common flags that we use, um, we're going to first of all consider what happens when we want to uh, not worry about whether we're dealing with upper and lower cases. So by default, when you make a, a regular expression pattern, it treats uppercase letters and lowercase letters as completely different things. And so you can say you want to match on an uppercase letter A, and it will therefore match uh, on that, but it won't match on a lowercase A. But sometimes you have situations in which you actually don't want to care about um, whether it's an upper or lowercase uh, that you're matching for, um, but you don't want to have to go and change the original string. You don't want to have to go and fix the case of the original string. You just want to say that in this uh, data we're trying to uh, recognize, um, we could have either lower or uppercase, and we don't really care which one it is. So we need to make our regular expression case insensitive. So let's go and just get a little example of this. So this is going to show, first of all, what happens if we just do the default thing. So in the first line, we define our regular expression pattern, and this is the same as we've seen in the previous parts. So we're looking for a start of a word, and then either PY or LL or ED, and then we're looking possibly for two digits, and then we're looking for two or four, between two and four alphanumeric characters, and then another word boundary again. And I'm going to feed it a string with a mixture of usernames in upper and lower case. And what you see when we ask it to um, iterate over all the results it can find is it just finds two results, which are the two lowercase uh, username matches. So that's the default behavior with it being case sensitive. Now we go and take the same re regular expression pattern, but we now add in that first line this new flags keyword parameter, which we set to re.ignore case. So actually, internally, the flags are just integers, but the RE module helpfully goes and defines uh, a bunch of uh, names that correspond to those numerical values to make it a bit easier for us to go and say. And in fact, for every flag, there is uh, two names. There's a short name and a long name. But here I'm just going to use the long name because they're a little bit easier to understand what they mean. Um, so we just pass re.ignore case into the flag. And now when we run that regular expression match, you see it's matching not just the lowercase usernames, but also the uppercase. And so we capture all four usernames that were in the original string, irrespective of whether they use lowercase or uppercase letters. So that's what the re.ignore case flag is doing. OK, so another flag you might want to think about is to do with how it, regular expressions handle multiple line strings. So um, as we've um, said in the previous, the, um, when we're dealing with uh, multi-line strings, we need to be a little bit careful because there are some special rules about how things work. So normally, when you pass a multi-line string to a regular expression pattern and say match against this string, the regular expression will try and match across the entire string, even though it's got many, many, might have many, many lines in it. And therefore, the um, uh, pattern elements we use that match the start and the end of the string um, match just once, right at the start and right at the end of the string. There's a little bit of a complication, though, and that is that, as we mentioned previously, the full stop um, pattern, which should match any character, matches any character except a new line. Um, and we'll see that this can cause some problems. But if you're processing a string with multiple lines in it, you might actually want it to be the case that um, you deal with things line by line by line. Uh, in that case, what you'd like to have is the caret and the dollar symbols not match just the start and end of the string, but also match the start and end of each line. Um, and then this is uh, uh, what you can end up doing. So let's suppose what we wanted to go and do was identify all the lines in a block of text where somewhere in the line we had a username. 
So we'd have some text that maybe looked like this. So this is a multi-line string, and you can see there are two lines, the second and the third line, on which there are usernames, and then the first and the fourth lines don't have usernames. And so what we'd like to go and do is pick out of that just the lines where we actually had a username somewhere in the, in the line. So this is how we could go about doing it. So um, the first thing to notice is that we've passed this flags equals re dot multi line. Um, and this is going to be the thing that's going to tell us that, tell the regular expression um, uh, pattern engine that you're using a multi line string and you want the carrot and the dollar to match the start and end of lines, not just the start and the end of the whole string. So then our actual pattern, uh, we have the carrot at the start, which is saying match the start of a line. And then we say match any number of characters until we get to a word boundary. Um, and then we have our regular username patterns. So we're, we're picking out this, the same usernames we've been picking out before. And then after the username, we want to match any number of characters up until the end of the, the line. So now when we uh, try and use that pattern and we again, we iterate over all the results, you see that it is correctly pulling out two lines and the two lines that have a username. Uh, inside them. And it's not matching against the first and the last line because those don't have usernames. So that's how we're using the RE multi-line flag to make the regular expression pattern work um, on a line-by-line -line basis. If we omit that special flag and try and run it, then in fact it doesn't match at all. And the reason it doesn't match at all is to do with the fact that it's this, it's the we're trying to match the start of the string, and then we're going dot star. And dot star will match everything else in the first line, but it won't match the end of line marker at the end of the first line. So it won't ever go to the second line. And so it says, well, I didn't find a username in the first uh, in, in the, the first bit. The first part of that pattern didn't match because there was no username in the first um uh, in, in the first line of the string. And so it just says this doesn't match at all, which obviously is not really the right thing. What you could do in this circumstances is you could tell it, tell the regular expression pattern that the full stop should go and match um, uh, the end of line character as well. So you could add the end of line character as being something that the full stop goes and, and matches. And that's done with the re dot all, dot, dot all flag. Um, and then when you go and do that, that will now allow that pattern to match the entirety of the string. Of course, it's matching the, the whole four line string because it is now saying that, well, there is a username somewhere inside that four lines, that, that, that whole four line string. In fact, there are two usernames in that string. Um, but that's maybe perhaps not quite the thing you wanted to go and do because um, what it does is it says there's just one result and the one result is all um, 153 characters of the of, of the original string. But the you can see there the, the dot dot all flag is um, uh, allowing it now to have the full stop match across the end of lines. Um, but as I said, this is probably not quite what you actually wanted it to go and do. Uh, and then the, the final flag I'd just like to mention uh, in this section is the re.verbose flag. So one of the things you've probably got the hang of by now is that regular expression syntax can get quite hard to go and read. There's an awful lot of punctuation marks flying around. Um, and it gets even worse if your regular expression pattern includes punctuation marks as well to work out exactly what you're matching where. And it'd be nice if we could write it in a way that was a little bit clearer and a little bit easier to understand. And this is what re.verbose lets us do. So here we've got the same pattern we've been using to match usernames, but I've done this now with the re verbose flag turned on, and that gives me some more options. So you can see that I can now put multiple lines into my pattern. So in fact, I've had to, when I define the pattern, I've had to use a triple quoted string because I'm going to have a multi-line string. It's still a raw string because I've still got backslashes flying around the place. Um, but I can also now put in, as well as splitting the, the regular expression over lines and adding lots of space to make the formatting look a bit nicer, I can also now put some comments in to actually explain what's going on with each part of the pattern. And so you can see I can label it up saying this is a matching the start of the word, and then this is recognizing usernames that start with P, Y, L, L, or E, D. 
and then this is the bit that's optionally doing the the year digits and then the bit with two to four alphanumerics and then the end of the, the line and then just to prove that this actually goes and works still um we just feed it into that same string we've been using before with a variety of um uh undergraduate and postgraduate usernames and you can see yes it does in fact match all of the usernames in the that were in the string so the dot all is quite handy because it makes the um, regular expression pattern so much easier to read